Like this, there are four concepts are there. That is nothing but resident, resident but ordinary resident, resident but not ordinary resident and non-resident. From some competition of income from house property, this is for section C, 15 marks question. The list of perquisites, additional benefits, whatever is there for the employee to be received from his employer and how it is taxable and how it is benefited for the concept. Warm welcome to 5th Sam BBA students for discussion of the subject called Income Tax 1. This is a subject where we are going to learn about the concept of taxation and other process what we have earned during the previous year or the last financial year. I am Professor Rajesh L.R. from Department of Commerce and Management with the Ashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. This is subject what we have for the fifth sem BBA Income Tax 1, where each and every student will come to know that one, what is income and what is tax, why the tax has to be paid and how the tax has to be calculated on the income whatever we have earned during our previous year and what is the savings we can make and what is the amount of tax can be paid less from the benefits whatever we have here and which will be useful for their future aspects also. In today's agenda, we are going to discuss about the subject introduction concept, the learning outcome. The learning outcome is nothing but after completion of the subject, whatever we have in the semester, every student should be in a capacity that one to know and to analyze and make out in such a way that one whether is a resident or resident but not ordinary resident or resident but not ordinarily resident or non-resident of India during previous year and the second part you should be able to calculate the tax concepts on income from salary or income from house property whatever we have here how to analyze that one which are the points are to be considered and which are the points has to be not considered here and you should be able to make out in such a way that in which are the income are they which are exempted under section 10 of income tax act of 1961 all this concept we are going to learn in depth in our part here and we have nearly five modules in the semester in the first module we are going to learn the introduction of income tax in India and overall. In the module 2, we are going to learn the residence taxation process, incidence of tax and residential status. And in the third unit or the module, we are going to learn about income from salary, how the salary will be taxed and which section is there support us to avoid for the main pay less tax to the government and get the benefited and what are the benefits are there at the time of earning salary and income from house property and the next last module will be a deductions and the taxation process whatever we have here the tax what are to pay annually all these modules will can be learned in a simplest way and you can understand in easiest way where we are going to discuss in all the annuals that one how a student can understand the concept in a way that one in a simple and make use for his benefits in the present scenario or in the future either he can guide his parents or any relatives by getting the information whatever we have here. The syllabus what we have here, the basic concepts of income tax, residential status and incidence of tax, there's a Unit 2, Unit 3, income from salary. Unit 4, income from house property. Like this, we have plenty of sections are there. And what is the advanced tax ruling we have here? And the dates of advanced taxes. Now, the module 1, as I said to people, in this module 1, we're going to learn how the taxation came into existence in our country. After 
Industrial Revolution of 1857, mid of 1857. In the year 1860, the government was facing lots of finance problem and other issues. So the government decided, why can't we collect some amount from the public in the form of tax? And they were not knowing that when how to collect the tax and how much to collect the tax. By the days are moved, now they came into concept that how the tax has to be collected and how much has to be collected and for what purpose we have to collect the taxes and later on they came and they made certain rules and regulations for that one, framing certain sections after framing from the act of 1961. So till 1961, it was not confirmed and it was not in their mind at all that one, how to collect the tax, but they were collecting the tax from the people and they were utilizing that amount for the benefits of the government and for the public of the country. Like this, they were doing that. One. So what is the meaning of tax? Tax is nothing but here, the amount collected by the government from the person for earning certain sorts of income received by him either received from India or outside India during previous year. A person who has received or going to be received any income from any source during previous year and it is taxable in the hands of the person. So tax is nothing but it is a lifeblood for the better government governance. So they are saying that one like each and every amount what they are going to charge or levy on the income earned by the person that be utilized for the betterment of the government or for the purpose of the citizen of the India. And we are going to learn here how many types of taxes we have in this chapter. In this chapter, we have as the said types of taxes, we have here two types of taxes that is direct taxes and indirect taxes. And the next part we have here canons of taxation, the principles of taxation we are going to learn and there is a compulsory question for theory part here. And brief history of Indian income tax, we're going to learn in depth how it came into existence, why it came into existence and what were the rules and regulations were there at that time and how the people were suffering to pay the tax and why they are afraid if they listen the word tax itself. And the next concept we're going to know here, after making all the information collected from the market and from the economy of the country, they started to frame certain legal concepts for the taxation. Those things we're going to learn and the definitions which are very important for the taxation process and to know in the income tax subject, we're going to learn in depth easily and almost all the words, whatever we have in the Income Tax Act 1961, it is defined under section two, uh, only one word which is defined under section three and reminding all other Words are defined under the section 2 here and we are going to learn each and every part here. Assessment means analyzing the person's income, how much he has to pay tax. And assessment year is nothing but it is a year where the assessee's income will be calculated and will be informed. This is the amount of tax what you have to pay for the income earned during previous year. Previous year is a year where the assessee has earned certain income. Like this, we are going to learn each and every word in the simplest way and which is better for you to learn and understand and which can, you can clear your paper easily. Person. Here, person means under section 2 sub clause 31. We have person means an individual. An individual and HUF, a partnership firm, joint stock company, body of individual, 
association of person artificial judicial person person means according to income tax act 1961 which has been defined under section 2 sub clause 31 it says that when any individual or a chief in the undivided family a partnership firm or a joint stock company body of individual association of person or artificial judicial person will come under the category of person person means these are the people will come under the meaning of person income income is nothing but the assessee or a person who has received the income during previous year either from it may be from the salary house property business or profession by sale of assets capital gains or other than all this it's it is called as other sorts of income received by a person during previous year like this uh, plenty of concepts what we have in this income tax we're going to learn and utilize all the words in a proper way in our future life and the module two we have here the residential status and incidence of tax in this chapter we are going to learn that one the residential status of a person residential status of a person is nothing but whether he is a resident or resident but ordinary resident or resident but not ordinary resident or a non-resident like this there are four concepts are there that is nothing but resident resident but ordinary resident resident but not ordinary resident and non-resident if i want to become a resident here if i want to become a resident i have to satisfy one basic condition if i've satisfied any one of the basic condition laid down under income tax act 1961 so they're going to call me as a resident if i satisfy any one of the basic condition and both additional condition then they're going to call me as a resident but ordinary resident if i satisfy one basic condition and any one of additional condition then they're going to call me resident but not ordinary resident if i doesn't satisfy any basic condition they're going to call me as a non-resident of india nri so like this the conditions are the basic and additional condition which we are going to discuss in in depth in our upcoming sessions where it will be better for you people to understand the sessions clearly and get into the part and there will be one compulsory question for you people for section b also it will be helpful for you to get into the examination part also and the next we are going to learn here the determination of resident status of an individual and the incidence of tax or scope of total income. Incidence of tax is nothing but whether I've earned the income in India or outside India, whether I've received the income or I'm going to receive the income in India or outside India during previous year, whether it is taxable or not. If it is taxable under what circumstances based on my status it is taxable and how it is taxable we are going to learn in depth in the upcoming sessions and it is a compulsory problem will be there for you people for 10 marks problems on computation of gross total income and income from an individual see gross total income is nothing but here the total income of any person income from salary income from house property income from business or profession income from capital gains income from other sources the total of all this is nothing but gross total income like this we're going to calculate the income earned by assessee or a person during previous year either it may be from salary house property business or profession capital gains or income from other sources all this total is nothing but our gross total income and this will be compulsory problem for you people and it is very easy to understand and solve in the 
unit 3 income from salary as I was discussing a salary is nothing but a person receiving from the work whatever he has done from his employer he should be an employee and if he is an employee and receives the amount from his employer for the work done by him in the organization and if he crosses the limits as per the income tax of 1961 it is taxable and how it is taxable and what is called salary year and what are the components are there which will include in the salary salary includes basic pay da cca bonus house rent allowance and telephone alliance, education alliance, marriage alliance, project allowance, like this we have plenty of allowances are there which are included in the word salary. We are going to learn each and every allowances whether the allowances is fully taxable or allowances are partially taxable or allowances are exempted from tax. Which allowance is taxable and which allowance is part is taxable and which allowance is totally not taxable in the hands of the assessee. We are going to learn these concepts in our module 3 income from salary and even we are going to learn what are the benefits are there for an employee from his employer to be received the term called gratuity as per the gratuity of the act of 1972 what are the rules and regulations are there and what is pension and what is leave salary, how you can get benefited from the leave salary, whether it is taxable or not. We are going to learn every concept in our upcoming session and it is required for the purpose of understanding and betterment to use for in your future when you are going to become an employee in any organization, it can be benefited for you people. And what are the deductions are there which will be supported to you? to avoid for the payment of tax that is nothing but to pay less tax and we are going to have problems on taxable salary here and it is compulsory question for you people for section c 15 marks so if you learn this one in a proper way what is basic pay da and which are the items are to be considered for the calculation purpose and how it has to be calculated each and every concept will be taught you people in easy and very simple way where you can understand and you can get into the examination without any hurdles and you can secure the full marks. We are here for you every time and every second of your future. And the next module four we have here income from house property. In this income from house property, House property is nothing but if I have a own building, residential building, if I have given that for any rental purpose, either for business or any commercial purpose or if I have given for the residential purpose and if I receive any amount from the tenant, it is called income from house property and how it is taxable and how much it is taxable, we are going to learn in our upcoming session under module 4, house property and which are the house property incomes are exempted, we are going to learn from this chapter and composite rent, unrealized rent, unrealized rent is nothing but the rent not received by the SSC during previous year for certain reasons. So we are going to learn and it is very much required for your examination purpose. For two marks questions, it will be compulsory for you people. And determination of annual value will be discussed easily and it is required for your section B. Compulsory question will be there for you people. And prompts on computation of income from house property, this is for section C, 15 marks question. So in this year, unit compulsorily there will be one two marks question and one ten marks and one fifteen marks and it is very easy to understand this concept and even to secure marks in the examination and in the module five we are going to learn here 
the deduction benefits available for the SSC and even we're going to learn tax deduction at source means whenever I'm going to receive any income from the employer or from any person he deducts the tax and he's going to give the remaining amount for us. Tax deducted as source means tax has been deducted from our income. Tax deducted from our income. So that amount is definitely whether I have to pay the tax means that amount will be used for that one or if the amount of tax is not to be paid by the SSC during previous it means if it is deducted means that amount will be refunded to the SSC after making assessment of all the things and how the SSC can claim the refund of tax paid at source we are going to discuss this one in our module 5 and which is required for us to understand how the employer or the person is going to deduct the tax and how we can get back if we are not coming under the bracket of tax payable. So now these concepts are very important and which can be understood by the students in a easiest way and make out usage in the future purpose here. And next we have here, what are the deductions are there and which are the sections are there which support us. And with the sections, SSC can benefit it plenty and how it can get the benefits that one and what types of benefits are there, how it can get that benefited. We're going to learn under this deduction under section 80C, 80CCD or 80D, 80DDB or 80G. ATCCC like the sections we have here which has been used for the purpose of deduction benefited for the SSC from the gross total income and how much he has to pay tax to the government. And the skill development activities are here after completion or at the time of doing the semester part year the students have to write some important concepts where they have to collect such in information from the market or from the information what we're going to provide and in that one the slab rate they have to prepare a slab rate slab rate is nothing but if i earn the income how much i have to pay the tax and what is the percentage of tax i have to pay so we're going to learn the slab rates and which slab rate i'll be coming and how much tax I have to pay. These concepts will be discussed here and they have to collect some information from the channel accountant and the tax returns of an individual and they have to list out any 10 incomes exempted from tax of an individual. See here, if you collect this 10 incomes exempted from tax of an individual under section 10 and it is a theory question compulsory will be there for section b which supports for you in two way one by collecting this practically i'll be knowing that in which are the taxes are exempted from tax and that can be written easily in the examination and the list of perk visits additional benefits whatever is there for the employee to be received from his employer and how it is taxable and how it is benefited for the concept. Like this, we are going to learn every part here and it is supporting for our students and even for their future and in the present scenario also. The question paper pattern as per University of Mysore, we have here it is a 60 marks paper and it is divided into three parts part a part b part c and part a is for two marks and part b is for 10 marks and part c is for 15 marks like this they have divided and in part a there'll be seven questions where you have to write only five and the weightage of marks will be 10 here and Part B, they're going to ask you four questions, where you have to write two questions and it is each question card is 10 marks, the total marks will be 20 here, the weightage. Part C, they're going to ask you four questions, where you have to write two questions and each question carries 15 marks and total weightage will be 30 marks. The total will be paper will be for 60 marks for your examination. 
the semester end examination what we saw there say part a will be for you people that is from question number one to seven will be for two marks and question number eight to eleven that will be for ten marks question number twelve to fifteen will be for fifteen marks in section a i have to write only five questions and in section b i have to write only two questions and part C I have to write only two questions. Here it is two marks and 10 marks and 15 marks. This is the question paper pattern which will be there for you people for the examination purpose. And you can clear your paper easily and even almost all the students can secure 60 out of 60 if they understand the concepts and write it in a proper way and make use of all the session information. Semester end examination, minimum marks for a pass. Candidates who have obtained a minimum 35% marks in semester end, that is examination, that is 21 marks out of 60 marks of theory examination and 40% in aggregate, that is total of 40 marks out of 100 marks of the semester examination and continuous internal evaluation marks. They're saying that when a student has to get 40 marks out of 100 to clear the paper. The books for reference of this subject and giving clear cut information for people, you have to refer the books in the present assessment year, part year and not the previous one. The books should be used for the income tax, it should be present assessment year only and not the act which was discussed in 2010 or 12 or 13 or 14 or 14 or 15. We have to use the book which has been re revised print during the 2023-24. See, book from B. Mariappa, Income Tax Law and Practice 1 by Himalaya Publication. Dr. Saha, Law and Practice of Income Tax, Himalaya Publication. It should be latest edition of the textbook should be used for the income tax purpose and it should not be old version or editions of the book. So be careful and use the information properly and then get benefited for this one. Thank you to all my dear students that one. The subject information was discussed in the session and even we have discussed about what is the benefits are there for an SSC and who is called SSC and who is a person under section 2 sub clause 31 and how it has been defined under Income Tax Act of 1961. Each and every word what we are going to get in this subject we are going to learn easily in the upcoming sessions and which will be benefited for you people to clear your paper and for your examination purpose and future purposes also. Better use all the information in a good part here and it supports for your future. Thank you to all.